fully in the know of Tamil Nadu politics and don't know these individual parties. Let me put that story in a slightly broader perspective. It is extremely important and perhaps critical for the Congress party to try and woo either of the three main parties to make a bid for power without the left. That will be um, uh, AIADMK, that's Jaya Lalita, Chandra Babu Naidu in Andhra Pradesh or Mayawati in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, the difference between Mayawati and Jaya Lalita is that while Mayawati is on her own in Uttar Pradesh, Jaya Lalita is leading an alliance and the Congress party's strategy seems to be right now to eat into Jaya Lalita's alliance. Bottom line is, if Jaya Lalita knows of these moves, she's not going to make it make, uh, be very happy. Is the Congress party doing this? Knowing fully well that Jaya Lalita on her own is committed to the BJP is the bigger political story that's emerging out of this therefore that Jaya Lalita is more or less going with the BJP just that a formal announcement has not been made. There will be speculations on both these, uh, both these fronts but these are the two big developments that we followed so far. Now on another big developing story we have Madhav Das Gopalakrishnan. We are told that the BJP has tried on several occasions, in fact on four separate occasions over the last uh, 24 hours in fact to establish contact with Jaya Lalita. There's no yes, Jaya Lalita has not responded to a single telephone call or a message through two separate emissaries uh, to uh, the BJP. That Modi had sent wishes to Jaya Lalita on election day. There is no response from Jaya Lalita to even the message of Narendra Modi. And that Jaya Lalita is now waiting to the 16th for a final response. For all the details on that inside track story, first to Madhav Das Gopalakrishnan. Madhav. Absolutely, Arnav. In fact, uh, several of those facts that you mentioned over there, if I can just run them over, Narendra Modi, very significantly, the points first that the BJP is put in place to deal with Jay Jay Lalita, to woo Jay Lalita back into the NDA fold. Uh, he, of course, uh, trying to establish contact with Jay Jay Lalita right on that important day of uh, polling in Tamil Nadu, uh, trying to reach across to Jay Lalita, and that uh, really not working uh, uh, even for the BJP. Narendra Modi's phone message uh, uh, not being responded to by Jay Jay Lalita, not coming on the line as far as uh, Narendra Modi's phone call is concerned. So definitely as far as the BJP is concerned it's going to be extremely difficult to get Jayalalta onto the table. Jayalalta is of course uh, maintaining an almost stoic like silence uh, saying that she's only going to talk post the 16th of May and that in turn could perhaps uh, spell trouble for the uh, for the NDA because really there's no guarantee of which way Jay Jayalalta will go. The NDA will really have to ensure that it's offering her the best possible deal it can in a, a government, in a possible future government better than perhaps even the third front or the UPA if they really want to get Jalalta on their side. And she's going to look for the surprise factor. She's, she's aiming for something higher. What we read out of this uh, big story on the inside track tonight, uh, Navika, is that Jalalita is upping the stakes knowing she's individually going to get perhaps more than 20 seats on her own and then wants to bargain for something bigger. What's that something bigger with Jalalita see? Well, the only big thing that uh, Jaya Lalita at this point could reasonably be expecting is going probably with the Congress if the numbers are on her side, if the Congress promises to dismiss the DMK government in Tamil Nadu. We know that there is discontent within uh, the Congress in Tamil Nadu which is supporting the Karnanidhi government but they are not part of the ministries. That's something that the Congress at the local level has been demanding but in return for support in the UPA from the DMK, the Congress has kept out uh, of the government uh, in, uh, in the state. But this time around, if Jay Lalita is uh, looking uh, towards Congress, then she's got only one demand on her mind. Of course, in the third front, she will be looking for anything like big ministries, uh, big portfolios, if she gets the numbers right. But if the NDA looks like it's going to be forming the government, then she's done business with them in the past. Who knows? She could go with them. Well, you know, in politics now, as it's always said, there is no memorandum of understanding. There's no... <laughs> It's not like a memorandum of understanding. So Narendra Modi, who has signed many memorandums of understanding, not all of which have fructified in terms of uh, bringing in industry into, uh, into his own state of Gujarat, will know that an MOU is not going to work and that uh, Jaya Lalita is going to seek something more concrete than that. Perhaps she is going to seek the kind of credit uh, that the Tatas got when uh, they brought the Nano into Gujarat. Let's see how that story develops. Now we are told another very big story breaking right now. Before that, let, let me do a quick recap of the three stories that we have followed so far here on the inside track in case you are only just joining this broadcast right now. Andhra Pradesh potentially could head to turbulence. 
could have to tell us. But before that, there is still no yes from Amma. The BJP has kept, been kept waiting for a very long time now. Not even a reply to the BJP phone calls. Not even a reply to Modi's message. That's one story on the inside track which we are following. Of course, two other stories on the inside track which we broke before.